Hello, I'm Steve, and welcome to the Lucky Dice Antiques YouTube channel. Each week I post a video where I share things I have found while thrifting or yard sailing or auctioning. Auctioning doesn't work like as a verb like yard sailing does. I mean, yard sailing is not going to be found as a verb in the uh, Webster's Dictionary, but at least when I say yard sailing, it's slang enough that you know what I mean. But if I say I was auctioning, that kind of implies I was selling stuff, like auctioning stuff off. But anyway, I digress. I buy stuff, I resell it, and I like to show those things here on the video to kind of help promote uh, my buying and reselling. So uh, a couple weeks ago, I posted a video where I said I had been in my attic and had found some boxes of stuff that I bought thrifting like two or three years ago, some two years ago, some three years ago, and uh, put it away with the intent to sell it someday. And uh, so I came across the stuff and have been digging out, digging it out and showing some of it, as well as uh, listing some of it for resale. So I also in that video mentioned there were two shoe boxes and here's one of them. Shoe box for Skechers. I have not opened this box, um, but I have opened it because this is my second take at this video. Um, but I only got about three minutes into the video before I realized I had to stop because my window air conditioner was running. Uh, we have central air in the house, but the den is upstairs and the air isn't as good up here. So uh, I have three monitors, two computers in here that put out a lot of heat. So I have a window air conditioner that runs as well. And if you recall, last week's video, I left that air conditioner running the whole time and it made the audio, not, you know, it made it harder to hear me. So I promised then that I would try to always remember to shut it off and uh, I forgot, so I had to retake. This is, like I said, second retake of this video. But anyway, uh, also mentioning my den, if you have watched my videos before, you probably have noticed that there's stuff behind me. I have rearranged my den so that, uh, well, for a couple reasons, and one being so that there was some stuff showing up in the background for my videos. And uh, so there you go. You can see some pretties back there. Uh, that is a six pack of Hoosier Dome beer, never opened. It's dated like 1984. Rubik's Cube, stuff to do with this finger thing. A three way sign off a stop sign, which I bought. I did not uh, steal. Right, yeah, I bought it. I had to think a minute, but yeah, bought. And some other various stuff. And obviously, IU posters, IU flag right there, IU over here, here, here. So. Anyway, don't get too distracted by that, and uh, also don't try and get distracted by the glare in my glasses. In fact, I'm going to take them off because it's distracting me. Um, but anyway, let's get to this shoebox. I, like I said, except for seeing three things in it during the first take of this video, I have not looked in this box, so let's see what we got. Okay, the first thing is a Jimmy Johnson, uh, NASCAR driver Jimmy Johnson, Championship coin with Team Lowe's Racing. It is still in the original packaging. The coin is in a, like, it feels like it's in a hard plastic case inside the packaging. Uh, it is, says, because I don't know how well it shows up what it says. It says Jimmy Johnson, then across the bottom, back to back. He won back to back championships in 2006, 2007. I was never a Jimmy Johnson fan. I was a NASCAR fan, diehard NASCAR fan for a lot of years. Uh, I was a Jeff Gordon fan, and once he retired, I kind of lost interest in the sport. Uh, I still keep up with it a little bit and like to go to races, uh, but I'm not diehard like I used to be, which was every Sunday, man. I was camped out in my chair watching the race. Uh, yeah, so uh, Jimmy Johnson coin. And uh, the second thing in here is a... Uh, I believe it's a garlic press. And again, these are things I bought two or three years ago. I don't remember what I paid for it. I don't even remember buying. Like, I don't remember buying the Jimmy Johnson coin. I'm sure it must have been a yard sale fine because I wouldn't have paid much for it because that's well, Jimmy Johnson. But, and I have a metal coaster here that definitely looks vintage. Uh, let's try and see if you can see it. It is for the Washington monument in Washington DC but it's it's a little like tray kind of coaster not just flat so cup sits down in there about a half inch so I have that whoops that 
And okay, now we're, th those are the three things I saw in the first take of my video. So now we're back to new stuff. So I have this, which is, uh, I think I know what it is, but it, sa it says it's a rustic iron tool. It has a price tag on it of $5 from somewhere. I don't think I paid $5 for it. I'm hoping I bought this uh, at a thrift store. But it, uh, and I'm no farmer. Uh, I'm not a country kid. I'm a city kid. But I think it looks like it might, it's rough on these edges. So it, maybe it's used like to comb sheep. Yes? No? I don't think I want to use it to comb my hair. I mean, it would hurt. But my hair is a lot thinner than a sheep's fur. So, uh, Tell me if I'm right. Tell me if I'm wrong. What you think in the comments? Nobody comments on my videos. I mean, I'm still building this audience and don't have that many views even. But, you know, comments are nice, so leave me a comment. Uh, I have a very rusty tool of some sort. It looks like a multi-tool of some sort because it looks like there's a corkscrew in there. And then this little hook thing. And that's probably, I sort of say a bottle opener, but it's not hooked on the end. I don't know, but it's a mess of rust is what it is. And I don't think anything on this is going to move, at least not on this video. Actually, I, okay, the corkscrew did come out a little bit. Now it's poking me in the eye. <laughs> Maybe I should have done that the other way. <laughs> um, but anyway, there's that. Don't know what it is, really. And another rusted tool, which is a can opener. This is not very exciting stuff so far, uh, but I'm pretty sure it is a can opener. I think this slide's supposed to slide down, so the lid you're trying to remove goes in there. I don't know. I'll just let you look at it for a second. 1001. And then the other side, 1001. Okay. Uh, what is this? So this has a tag on it too. It says it is a wrought iron cooking strainer. It was also at an antique store for seven dollars. Uh, I don't, I have no idea what I, if I bought that. I can't imagine I'd have bought this as a seven dollar strainer because I've never had a need for one. And, I mean, it's cool, but then again, it's not like cool. Like, if I was in a thrift store tomorrow and saw this, I probably wouldn't buy it. So I'm really curious and will never have that curiosity satisfied as to where, when, how I ended up with this in my possession. So, um, trying to see what the next thing is that I can easily, oh, let's see. This looks like some sort of glass and it's wrapped up and it's wrapped up again in a blue sack and it is uh it is a well i gotta put my glasses on so ignore the glare see the player uh welcome to murat oasis uh from 1966 it's like a cocktail glass of some sort and I'm showing you the side that I just read it's just hard to read for you because there's writing on the back side too it says Devon Divan D-I-V-A-N I'm not sure how that's pronounced 1966 and then people have their, their signatures have been reproduced on here the chief rabbin or rabban the high priest and prophet the treasurer the first Serm master, C-E-R-M period, maybe like ceremony master, captain of the guard, more names and, and titles like that on that side too. So there we go. But apparently, I'm guessing the glass dates to 1966. I have another uh, Welcome to the Murat Oasis glass, but it's a short one. And it's also from the 60s. And I might even have that listed on eBay right now. I can't re recall for sure. So... Okay, let's unwrap the next Christmas present here to myself from past Steve to future Steve and see what I got me. It is a small bar glass for the Avondale, yeah, Avondale Dinner Playhouse in the Meadows Shopping Center, Indianapolis, Indiana. 
phone, seven digits, 5429241. So Avondale Dinner Playhouse. I live an hour south of Indy, and I'm certainly not versed in every playhouse in Indianapolis, but I've never heard of Avondale. Uh, so, that's and it looks like this is the last thing in this box. It was a small shoe box. And it is, I'm going to get it all out here, then fix the sack over here to the side. It is a, there's like four of these Tupperware. I can't tell if they, they definitely look like Tupperware colors, don't they? See? They're like little shot glasses. I don't know if that's what they are. Because uh, they could be like salt and pepper shakers that don't have their lids anymore. I just, the lighting is not, I have the light shined at me and I can't see real well if it says Tupperware or not. Uh, I think it does. I think these are Tupperwares. So four of those. And then, are these Tupperware? Hmm. They are. Uh, egg separators. Three egg separators. So... You can never have too many egg separators. That's what my mama always said. No, she really didn't say that. But that's it for that box. So you don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab the other box. And I'm back. Okay, that was a longer pause than I planned. Not that you can tell the difference because of editing. But I took a breather for a few minutes, turned the air on, got it cool in here. And funny story started recording this segment with the air conditioner on, but I only got a few seconds into it before I realized it. And so this is take number two, but I haven't opened the box yet. So here's the box. It is a shoe box for Earth. Different, like you. And I wrote on the box, September 2019, Steve, antiques to sell. Antiques being used loosely there because some of it's only vintage, you know. But anyway, uh, this box, <laughs> It's going to start out a lot like the first box because one of the first things I see in here is a another aluminum uh, garlic press. So that makes two garlic presses I own. And little secret, I've never pressed garlic in my life. Nope, never have. But apparently I could, and I could do it two hands at a time if I was so inclined and, and so talented. But, okay, let's see, what else do we have? So... Kind of remember these. I have some checkbooks. I know the lighting is kind of there, and oh, this one has isn't as exciting to look at because it has its cover. Um, but anyway, if we open this up, I have it upside down. So these checks are from the South Nashville branch of the Fourth and First National Bank in Nashville, Tennessee. Let's see that? Yeah. And it has little check stubs here, so I'll slide my glasses on here to see if I can read these. So this balance started with check number one, September 16th of 1927. He wrote a check to, I, or, or she, they wrote a check to J.R. Hamilton for cash. Uh, oh, it, was a, it wasn't a check, it was a deposit. So they deposited 70 bucks. Okay, hold on. I'm used to looking at these things in an Excel spreadsheet, you know, but 95 years ago, they didn't have Excel. So previously, he had deposited $70. He wrote a check for cash to 20, which brought his balance to 50. His next, next check, the $50 was brought forward. The, tr the check was to the Treasurer of the United States for insurance in the amount of $39.30. And then he quit writing down what his checks were for because there's a lot of checks missing, but nothing written on the stubs. Anyhow, so checks from 1927, which is pretty cool. And the other book, I think, is the same, uh, but I would be wrong. This is from 1928. It's a different bank. It's the Merchants and Planters Bank in Montevallo, Alabama. I'll read the stub to you, and I'll try and do a better job this time. So, he brought forward a balance of $52.53. He wrote a check for $5.55 to Miss Ann Kieran for the Cathedral of Engraving, it looks like. 
Anything else? Let's see. Oh, he paid he paid two dollars for storage on a coat, and then he paid a dollar sixty-two to the Dawson Novelty Shop, but I cannot tell what for. He crammed a lot in there, and it's really hard to read the details. He needed a finer point pen because this is the next stub, but you can just see it's. If I put it way over here, the light's better. So we're looking right here. But anyway, um, yeah, so some checks. Some really cool old ephemera there. And sticking with the ephemera, I'm going to pull out some other paper I see here. Let's see, I have a ticket stub of some sort for the Tropicana Showgirl Spin and Win giveaway. I think this dates back to when the Tropicana did give away Showgirls. You just had to uh, buy a raffle ticket. No, I'm kidding, of course. Um... But anyway, rules, uh, 25 winners a day. Yeah, that would have been a lot of showgirls to be given away. Uh, they draw every couple hours. You have 24 hours to claim your prize. You can spend a win up to $1,000 instantly. And then I have a ticket stub for the Folie Bergere. Is that how you say that? Folie Bergere show at the Tropicana. Uh, it says... Seating, 45 minutes prior, drinks not included. This show was on September 19th, 2001 at 10 p.m. And it says price, polo plus, P-O-L-O -O plus, like a polo shirt. They just take the shirt off your back. You think that was it? I don't know. No cameras allowed. See, they got a camera with a Ghostbuster circle across it. And... Uh, so, take a stub. Okay, now let's see. Oh, this is cool. Here is an unopened, still in its original package, box of National Lampoon's Vacation Wally World playing cards. How cool is that? And see, this is fun, because I don't remember some of these things. I kind of had a vague recollection of this when I saw it, but I had forgot all about it, so that's pretty cool. I love the National Lampoon's Vacation movies, and uh, I was trying to see if there was a date on this, but I can't make it out. If there is one, I can't make it out, but very cool. Okay, now let's see. Here is a safety deposit box key in its envelope. And I've, and let's see. Yep, there they are. And I've, I recall running across this a couple times, you know, in my lifetime. So I've had this for a long time. When I was in college, which has been a minute, I had a safety deposit box, and I lost the key to it. And I've always wondered if this was that key that I lost. So I had to pay the bank $75 to drill the lock. $75 is a lot of money, and it was especially a lot of money in 30 years ago ish and uh but the cool thing was was that i got to stand in the vault and watch them drill out the lock so that was kind of cool you know and i got a little bit more of my money's worth because you know it's a two uh, maybe you don't but anyhow it's a two lock system there's a key for the customer and a key that the bank puts in and you turn them both to open the box but anyway the uh guy doing the drilling drilled the wrong lock he drilled the bank's lock instead of my lock so then he had to drill the second lock, and it was kind of funny, and uh, I got to watch even more drilling going on. So, okay, let's see. This looks cool. This is aluminum, and it's it's got a little square to it. I think it's made to sit, to lay a stick of butter on, because then on this side, I don't know if you can see, there are measurements. So like this says, half cup or quarter pound. And in parentheses, it says entire stick and it points down that, that way. And then these are other measurements as well. So let's read the one on this end, which says one tablespoon. Yeah, so that's two tablespoons, three tablespoons, four tablespoons. What's this and say it's wider? Third of a cup. Actually, that one says a quarter cup, whatever. Anyhow, you get the idea. I guess this is from before they started printing this stuff on the wrapper around the stick of butter. But, all right. Let's 
that's packed in here pretty good, trying to decide what can I pull out easiest. Okay, some sort of glass. And it is, ta-da! It is for Boomtown. It's a white, uh, yeah, glass. I don't know, is there any marking on the bottom? Not that I can see in my light. Uh, Boomtown, probably some old casino somewhere, probably out west, given the graphic on it. Uh, but there you go. Do you need a Boomtown cup in your life? If so, let me know, because I have one I could sell you for a good price, I'm sure. Okay, by the way, it's starting to get a little hot here. See, I have the den door shut, which was a mistake, air conditioner off, and it's beginning to get warm in here. In fact, let's see. Let's check the, right, the, the temperature thingy back here. It is currently 77.9 degrees in the den. Yeah, no wonder I'm starting to feel a little sticky in here. So, we're going to pick up the pace here. Okay, this is something that's little. See, it's in my hand right there. It's only this big. What do we think it is? It's a bottle of some sort. Yep. And it's a little old bottle. Ooh, almost dropped it. <laughs> uh, what's it say on the side? Oh, bear aspirin. It's uh, embossed there on the side. So I decided after shooting most of this video, I'm not going to reshoot it. But I need to improve the lighting a little bit. I have light shining on me, but it's not showing up on this stuff as well. Like if I hold it over here and all. So, so next time I'll remember to turn. No, I won't. I'll forget and I'll have to re-record it. Turn off the air conditioner and fix get, get better lighting. So notes for next time. That's, that's okay though. See, I'm just always working to improve my videos. Make them better and better for you, my favorite person watching this video. Okay, so next thing is a mysterious package wrapped in a brown paper sack. So let's see what it is. Guess what? It's a glass. Oh, cool. It is a Playboy glass. And if I hold it right there, you can see the Playboy logo against my white shirt. Why didn't I think of that earlier with some of these things? So that's cool. I completely forgot I owned this glass. I just sold an ashtray with that. Did I sell it? Or did I show it? Oh, I sold a shot glass that I think had that logo on it. That exact same girl. I mean, I've sold, I, I, have a play, I know I sold a Playboy shot glass. I have a Playboy ashtray that I don't think I've listed yet. And now I have a Playboy glass. So, very cool. All right. Uh, I have one of these. It is, I believe it is for darning socks. And that what you do with this? You, you put it the, the sock over the end of it here, and then you can darn it easier. A um, little secret about me. In addition to have never pressed a garlic, I have never darned a sock. It's true. But anyway, I think that's what this is. And if I'm wrong, please tell me. And if I'm right, well, you don't have to really say anything. I mean, I, I'm right. Now this one, if you don't know what it is, and I tell you what it is, you're going to think I'm making it up. Because this is what I'm going to show you next. It's what I am showing you next. So you see, it's about just under a foot long. It's wood. And it's got all these little dujima hickers up here. Like this one's affixed. This one's loose. This one's affixed. So fixed, loose, loose, fixed, loose, fixed. You might think maybe it's some sort of like uh, maraca, the shake and make noise. But no, I seem to recall that when I looked this up like on Google Lens, which would have been like, in 2019 or earlier, and I don't even know if Google Lens was a thing then, but there was a way to look up pictures of what they were on the internet. And this is used to make Mexican hot chocolate. I'm almost certain I'm remembering that right. I don't know how. I mean, I think you use this to stir it, and I don't know why it has to be made in this fashion with the loose things. And See, I'll show it. Yeah, I'll let you zoom in on that a little bit. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it's what it is, and, uh, 
I have no idea, no idea where I got it, but I have one, so little thing about me. I have never made Mexican hot chocolate. It's true. Okay, we're almost through this box, so which is good because it's getting sticky in here. I have a tape measure, which isn't that exciting, is it? Um, and it's rather plain. It's red. There might have been something there that's long gone. So the other side looks the same. And uh, it's metal. Um, it has a note on it to add two inches because of this length right here. So when you pull this out to like one inch, well, you need to add two inches to it. And uh, yeah, add two inches for inside measure. And the other side says West Germany. So it was made in West Germany. And I have two programs from a Colts game, which is, these are not old at all. These are, uh, I don't see a date on the cover here, but I think I got these in 2019. So they're not vintage, old, or anything yet. Yeah, this is 2019, so need to, let's see. Uh oh Okay, so I did put a note in this that the Colts quarterback, Andrew Luck, announced his retirement at the conclusion of this game, which I was at. Uh, this might be the last program with him in it. And I said might because so many of these pages are pre-printed, um, and then they only change a couple pages for each game, you know. But uh, I never pursued that to see if they printed new ones after Luck retired, but... Anyway, if this is, you know, this program has a little more potential value down the road in like 100 years <laughs> um, because of the Andrew Luck connection there. So, and then the last thing in this box is a stack of postcards. So I'm just going to show them to you as I show them. So there's like a Christmas postcard uh, when you coming to visit. Oh, does it say so? When are you coming to visit? Yeah. It's hard to read backwards. It's hard enough reading forwards sometimes. I'm just going to let you read that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When a girl says quit that, she means keep it up. Hmm. Yeah, no, I don't think that's true. That's kind of dated, isn't it? Did I read that right? When a girl says quit that, she means keep it up. Yeah, no. This is not how Lucky Dice Antiques believes things are in this day and age. Um, but... It has a one cent stamp on it and a postmark that is illegible, but obviously from days gone by. So, okay, back to our normally normal, normally programmed schedule or whatever. Here's one of those funny postcards where it has choices. So when I send the postcard, I say I'm having a good time, bad time, lousy time, super time. You know, I, I'm making up, not reading it backwards. And each colored area is a different thing. So I'll, I'll read one like. I have seen, and your choices are, the mountains, the Indians, cowboys, wild animals, lots of fish, snowbanks, the plains, and then there's a write-in, and the guy wrote, the person wrote something in, but I can't tell what they wrote. Uh, here's a postcard. I could tell backwards that it has a horseshoe on it and that I'm holding it upside down because it says bon on a. Uh, is that happy new year? Good, new, good year? Something? Uh... Then there, gosh, this is really hard to do. Oh, it, this says the same thing, ball and A, down there at my fingers. And then this one is some flowers. Maybe I should have done this like this. Yeah. A birthday greeting, a holiday greeting, which has a message on it, which is kind of boring. I mean, not boring, but rather impersonal, don't you think? Uh, and then it just says, it's blank on the back, postcards, so. I guess I could send it to somebody for Christmas this year. Uh, a note for you. These have all been in a scrapbook, by the way. That's not the first one that I've seen that has the green scrapbook remains on it. Uh, I don't know where I got these. Just as the ivy to the tree, cling to me and I'll cling to thee. Christmassy card. And here's one to my own sweetheart. Uh, again, lots of scrapbook damage to the back. So, I don't know, maybe still have a use for junk journaling or something, but uh, 
that's it. That is a wrap on the video. Thank you for watching. Sorry uh, for the length, because gosh, this segment ran 18 minutes. So I don't know how long the other one was, but anyway, please like the video down below with the little thumbs up button, and uh, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.